I'm not gonna lie, I grew up listening to Bill Cosby and spending countless hours laughing at his stories. But after the recent facts were uncovered about Cosby and his sexually predatory and abusive practices against women, I find myself in a conundrum, and I know I'm not the only one. Can I, or even should I, separate the art from the artist? Well, to examine this discussion is the new documentary, We Need to Talk About Cosby, that's arriving on Showtime. Now, I got to check it out early at Sundance, but should you watch it? During his nearly 50 years in show business, Bill Cosby became one of the most recognizable black celebrities in America. With a career that included an astronomical rise on television in the mid-60s, working in children's programming and education, legendary stand-up performances and albums, and an epic-defining hit sitcom, The Cosby Show, Cosby was a model for black excellence for millions of Americans. But now, thanks to the brave and painful testimonies of dozens of women, we know there was a sinister reality to the man once extolled as America's dad. Now, this documentary is a long one, with four episodes that are each an hour long. And a large portion of the beginning of this focuses on giving us the background on Cosby and his rise to fame and then influence. I really appreciate the detail that goes into crafting the narrative, because even as someone who is familiar with the man, I mean, at least to a degree, there was a lot of information that's included to make sure we truly understand how influential he became and how far-reaching that influence was. But this then also gives us very convincing evidence from personal victim accounts on the hidden persona of Cosby. I mean, the one who is the sexual predator, using his nice guy role as a cover to draw victims in as his prey, knowing that his reputation protected him to a very large degree. We get a good amount of background on how he rose from being a stand-up comic, to a special segment on shows, to becoming a TV star, then a film star, and then just a media conglomerate. He was everywhere, and his influence was massive. Now, as I had stated, I grew up listening to the comedy albums, and then I even introduced his works to my kids. But what the documentary shows us is rather unsettling when we go back and listen to his comedy with the knowledge of all of his sexual assault crimes. I mean, the jokes take on new meanings, making them darker, sickening, and even confessional. There are interviews from all kinds of people within the entertainment community who worked with Cosby on his shows. But then there are also the interviews with journalists, other comedians, historians, and I think most importantly, some of his victims. The bravery they display to tell their story is inspiring, but it's also heartbreaking. I mean, I was riveted at their accounts, not out of some weird voyeuristic way, but just by how much their stories matched each other and then how prolific of a predator that he was. It's also shocking to learn about the longevity of these crimes. I mean, this wasn't something that Cosby did for a year or maybe even five. I mean, this was a lifestyle of assault for him and his victims then are numerous. The production is really well executed, with all of the interviews being very cinematic and then engaging to watch. I mean, interspersed throughout the documentary is the director's voice to guide the journey of his storytelling. Many times in documentaries, the director is an unseen and even unheard entity, removed from the story to just to allow it to all play out on camera. Here, this started with a story and conversation that was already happening in the world, and W. Kamau Bell, the director, who is also a stand-up comedian, felt that this needed to be told. This was a baffling and confusing conversation that just needed to be addressed. I mean, it was baffling and confusing because the crimes were such a contradiction to the public persona of Cosby and how he had become America's dad. Now, I know four hours may seem like a long time to tell this story, and some of it might be a bit overkill, but I didn't leave this feeling as though they had skimped on the information or even glossed over certain aspects. This dives into the uncomfortableness of the topic, and then it fully examines it all. This is a really balanced documentary because while it documents all of the terrible acts that Cosby did, it also acknowledges the contributions that his public persona made to society. He brought about a lot of education and good, and I think that's what makes this whole story so discombobulating. One of the interviewees even talks about his Jekyll and Hyde nature, where we have someone in the public space who brings all kinds of positive qualities, but the private persona is an absolute monster. I really appreciate that during the filming of this, the director becomes very honest and then baffled at what the story is because Cosby is released based on some kind of technicality. Bell had been conducting the interviews, collecting all the information and evidence of firsthand accounts to then have a reversal of ruling and incarceration. I mean, bewilderment becomes anger within so many of his victims, and rightfully so. I like that this documentary forces the audience to ask and answer the question of whether or not you can separate the art from the artist. Can we listen to his jokes and his stories and still get enjoyment while knowing all the terrible and heinous actions he committed against so many women? 
And I don't have the answer yet. I mean, while I can still hear some of his jokes in my head and laugh, I haven't put on one of his albums and given it a listen for quite some time. Will that knowledge of his crimes taint what I hear? And then should it? These same questions are wrestled with by a lot of the interviewees. And there's not a cut and dry consensus either. I love that this series doesn't shy away from the bad or the uncomfortable. I mean, this isn't a puff piece on Cosby meant to exonerate him from his crimes. Nor though do I think that it vilifies him unnecessarily. The evidence is presented and then the discussions are raised confronting that evidence. It's powerful, thought-provoking, but also very heartbreaking because these aren't just anonymous victims. I mean, not that it would make these crimes any less atrocious though, but hearing the harrowing accounts from those that chose to tell their story should disturb us all and then open up more of a discussion regarding sexual crimes. I'm still shocked that there are statutes of limitations on sexual assault, rape, and abuse. I mean, just like murder, the victim has permanent wounds, so the perpetrator should be able to be prosecuted at any time, not just within some crazy short time period. So overall, we need to talk about Cosby is a very compelling discussion and intriguing examination into the conundrum of who Bill Cosby is. There are so many examples of the good that he did for others, but the horrendous and violent crimes he perpetrated against women can't be ignored, nor should they. The interviews are insightful, informative, moving, and heartbreaking, and the production value of the entire series is top notch. The filmmaking and cinematography of the interviews is beautiful to watch, and the editing presents a cohesive and captivating narrative. There's no sex, I believe some slight nudity, a lot of profanity, and while no violence is shown, we are given numerous terrible accounts of the sexual violence committed against his victims. I highly recommend watching We Need to Talk About Cosby. I mean, carve out four hours of your day and binge it. It is definitely worth it. So what do you think about separating art from the artist? I mean, I know that can be a layered and complex question, but I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.